Hi, it's Dino, and I would like to show you something new. Apogee Edge now has three JWT policies for verifying, generating, and decoding JWT. And today, I want to show you how they work. So I've got three API proxies to show you, Verify, Generate, and Verify Goob. Um, the Verify proxy will verify uh, JWT. The generate will generate, as you can imagine, and the third one, verify Google, will just verify a special case for verification, verifying Google generated JWT. So let's click into the verify proxy. Um, so first, let's have a look at the proxy, the policies of interest. I have three different verified JWT policies. The first one I'll look at is uh, verifying, configured to verify a uh, JWT that is signed with HMAC. HS256. We can specify the source, what context variable to find the JWT in, and then also the uh, the key. In this case, we're going to need a secret key because it's HMAC. And then we can also verify other claims on the JWT. For example, the audience, the issuer, the subject, and so on. In this case, I'm just configuring this policy to verify the audience. So by default, the verified JWT policy would check all the times. Uh, to see that they're valid, that the issue date time and the not before time is valid, that it's not expired if the JWT has an expiry. Uh, and in, a, in addition, it'll check the signature and then any other claims that you specify in this verification policy. So really nice. Um, so let's see it work. First, I'm going to move over and start the trace. Uh, And while that's starting up, I'm going to flip over to my command line and I'm going to generate a JWT of my own using a command line tool. So this is a node tool. Uh, it's included in the repo that I'll, I'll publish for this uh, screencast, accompanying this screencast. And you can see I've generated a JWT. I've used my own private key, my own um, private key that I generated using OpenSSL uh, to, to create that JWT. And this is what it looks like in encoded form. And I also show it just for fun in the decoded form. This is all in the command line. So let's uh, put that into a, uh, into a variable. And then we'll also send that up to uh, the API proxy that we are now tracing. So I'll send that over. And you can see what I've gotten back is uh, a response that says, yep, that uh, JWT is valid. So let's flip over to the tracing. Um, and you can see that this is a RS-256 uh, JWT. Um, this is the inbound request. So we can see the JWT in the, in the header, in the authorization header. Uh, we extract that using extract variables and then uh, run the, the verified JWT policy. So here we can see what the inbound JWT was. And then these are all context variables that are set by this policy, extracting all that information. And finally, uh, one of the important ones is valid. Uh, and that will be set to true. This policy will throw a fault if the signature is invalid, if the times uh, indicate that the JWT is expired, or if any of the claims that you're trying to verify are, um, are not as desired. So uh, let's create a JWT with a different audience. We already saw that the policy is verifying a particular audience. Uh, so let's create a JWT uh, with a different audience. So we'll clear the screen here and we'll create something with, uh, I'll put in wrong audience. Now, odd is one of the mm, well-known claims in JWT. And we're just putting in that particular string for the audience. And the Apogee policy is actually verifying a different one. So let's see how it behaves uh, when we try to verify that one. On the command line, I'll just send that in again to the same endpoint. And you can see I'm getting a fault in response to that HTTP request. So let's go back in and we'll see the trace statement for that one. Uh, same inbound. Uh, but then on the uh, verify policy, you can see we've gotten all the extracted data because it is a, a, uh, a signed valid JWT, but the policy is throwing a fault because the audience claim uh, configured in the policy is not matching what was asserted in the JWT. 
So it fails and it throws a fault and we go into fault processing. That's how the JWT, the verified JWT policy works. So that's really nice. Um, you can also verify uh, HMAC JWT as we saw the configuration for that. Uh, in that case, the secret key needs to be available to the policy in a private variable. Uh, and you, you can see that in the, in the code that accompanies the screencast. So the bottom line is you can use the verify JWT policy to verify any uh, JWT signed with RSA or HMAC uh, produced by any party uh, as long as you have the correct key. So now let's move on to the generate policy. I'll click through to that. Uh, the generate policy just does the converse. It works with either RSA or HMAC signatures. Uh, if you use RSA, then the private key must be provided in a uh, private variable. So we'll look at um, this one. Uh, here's a generate JWT policy. We have to specify the private key and it's uh, obtained in a or, or provided in a private variable. Um, now, the recommendation is you're going to store that in an encrypted uh, KVM so that uh, the private key, which is a secret, is not available to just anybody observing uh, or operating Apogee Edge. Um, we've got um, another uh, policy here that verifies additional claims on the, um, on the uh, JWT. So um, this, is, this is a good example for um, how you can use uh, the generate JWT policy. It also has an expiry. Uh, you can set the audience, uh, subject issuer, and so on. I'll point out that you can also set the key ID uh, in the gen generated JWT, and that supports key rotation. So um, normal case, you're going to be pulling the private key out of a KVM in Apogee Edge along with the key ID. And then later, uh, consumers of this JWT will be able to query Apogee and say, here's the key ID. Uh, can you give me the public key for that? And Apogee will deliver that. OK, so that supports uh, key rotation. Let's, let's see it work. Um, first, uh, we'll ask uh, Apogee to generate uh, JWT. And we'll do that in the command line. So I'll run this curl command. And it's basically hitting that API proxy. Let me, um, before we do that, let's turn on tracing for this API proxy. And now I'll run that again. Uh, and we'll ask to generate another uh, JWT. And here you can see the JWT that's being generated. So um, what's in that? Let's grab it. And we will now uh, use a command line tool to verify that token, to decode and verify that token. So what I've got is, um, uh, again, a Node.js command line tool. And it's got the the uh, public key, so we have access to the public key for the corresponding private key that was used to sign it. And we'll just verify that. And the, this is the data that's coming out of that uh, JWT, and it verifies successfully. So um, I, I've stipulated here that I want to verify that uh, the audience is A12345, which is the audience that I specified in my uh, request to Apogee Edge. So let's change that around a little bit. Let's change the audience to uh, different audience um, and we'll get a different JWT back let me grab that and now if I run the, the verification again it'll say nope that uh, audience is invalid we were expecting a12345 because that's what I told this command line tool but in fact the audience was different audience so the signature was valid, but the contents were not valid. Um, and you can see the tracing statements here. Um, here we're seeing uh, the output JWT that was uh, issued by the policy. OK, so that's the generate scenario. Um, those prior two examples, I showed you generation and verification of tokens using my own public-private key pair. Now, the last thing I would like to show you is verification of a token generated by an external third party. In this case, we'll use a token from Google Sign-In. Uh, and I have a different API proxy for that. It's uh, very similar. It has one uh, verification policy, verified JWT. And basically, I'm saying, look, it's, a, it's an RS-256 signed 
JWT. That is what Google Sign-In always uses. Um, we are uh, verifying the issuer was uh, accounts.google.com. And uh, one more interesting piece, we're using a J, JSON web, key, um, web token key set uh, reference for uh, Google. Uh, where do we get that? Uh, actually, that uh, web key set is um, available on a public link, so I can go look at that. Let me grab that URL. This is where Google Sign-In publishes the public keys that can be used to verify signed JWT that they issue. So what I've done is in the API proxy, I've got a flow where uh, the API proxy itself calls out to that link and then stores and caches that JWKS just in that JSON form and then uses that uh, JWKS when verifying. So we're just going to use a reference to that thing when verifying. So what's going to happen is the key ID stipulated in the Google issued JWT will be looked up in the JWKS. We'll look for this key ID or that key ID or that key ID and then obtain the correct key and then do the proper signature verification using that key ID. Uh, and the verified JWT policy does that all automatically. So let's turn on tracing again. Uh, we'll go through that. And to help us along, where are we going to get a token signed by Google? Uh, and for that, we'll use the Google sign-in service. And the way to do this is to kick off uh, an OpenID Connect uh, flow. And I'll show you what this looks like. So basically, we need a client, a registered client ID in secret, which I've already done for Google. Um, and, uh, and we just perform a get on this, and that's going to kick off a flow. So um, we'll see what this looks like. I'll open that in a new tab. And you can see this is the standard Google sign-in. I've got a couple of accounts. One is my work account. One is my personal account. Uh, and I can select either one of those uh, to sign in. So let's just select my work account. And uh, since I'm already authenticated, I did not need to re-authenticate. Uh, but Google issues an ID token through that. This is what it looks like. Uh, the callback URL, I just built a little web page that displays the ID token. Normally, this is going to be sent to an app for consumption. But in this case, we're just displaying it. And you can see the contents of that. Now, we haven't used any Apigee yet. We just generated an ID token. So what I want to do is grab that token, uh, set it into my variable, and then uh, we'll call the Apigee uh, endpoint that verifies uh, the Google token. And you can see what I've gotten back here. I've got uh, the key ID that was used, um, the JWT ID, uh, the email uh, asserted in that token, and the time remaining, and so on. So all of that information is available. Um, you can see there's no uh, first name or last name uh, associated to that. So um, what I can do is uh, ask for profile information that gives uh, in, in that Google sign-in flow, and that will give me um, that will give me some additional information. So if I kick off again uh, the same sign-in select my work account. Now I'll get a different JWT, and this one will include a first name and last name, and that can also be uh, verified um, by uh, the Apigee policy. So we'll show that here. Um, just invoke that endpoint again, and now you can see it's got my family name and given name because the, um, the sign-in token uh, provided that. Okay, so that's the demonstration, and in summary, you know, the JD, JWT policies in Apigee Edge will allow you greater capability in handling JWT in your API flows. That's it for now.